My hands and feet grow cold. Cold. It is as if I do not possess them. Then my body shivers. My body shivers. Shivers. And inside of my body seems to shake. This goes on and on, hmm. and if I hear someone talk, I get angry. My rage is such that I could even hit my father <gasps> and mother. She behaves like the evil spirit possessing her, whom she declares to be Mary Nona. She shrieks, runs all over, threatens to assault people and eat them up. Kanawa, I will eat you up, eat you. Possession is not something alien to her. She, like other women of her background, has seen women who have been possessed by spirits. Kanawa. The ego is protected from the shame of her unfeminine behavior she may have performed for two reasons. First, she has total amnesia for the action performed during possession. Secondly, family members are tolerant of her bizarre behavior since it is not she but an independent demon who behaves this way. Thus, a pattern of behavior has been established. Whenever the strains become intolerable, the patient gets possessed. The fact that one of the demons possessing Somawathi was thought to be her grandmother has... Kanawa. 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 I will eat you up. Eat you. The mother's mother was a loved person. Dearly so. Yet in the infantile psyche, she was also a hated person. She was responsible for removing Somawathi from her mother's breasts and these simply could not be replaced by the grandmother. She had also betrayed Somawathi when she was handed back to her parents in order to look after her younger siblings, a traditional pattern for young girls of poor families. Kanava, I will eat you up, eat you. I will eat you up, eat you. I will eat you up. I will eat you up. Eat you. Through the demonomorphic representation of her grandmother, she could express several things. Her hatred for this kind lady and her oral rage against a hated and loved person, her own mother. She, that is, the preta in her, threatens to eat the mother. Her mother's own shock and pain must have been very great, 
for it is her own dead mother, as Preta inhabiting her daughter, who is saying all this. In addition to this, she declared that two demons, Mahasahona and Riri Yaka, were also possessing her. She was thus bringing new demons, all male and culturally recognizable, and feared, to articulate her unconscious desires. Both these demons are characterized by extreme aggression. Riri Yaka is said to have torn his mother's breast and emerged into the world after having killed her. No, no, show me, show me. Exorcism. The exorcism was done at a shrine in a suburb of Colombo, the capital city. The clients are generally lower middle class or working class people, neither affluent nor indigent. The priest lives in a hut on the premises of the shrine. Between the hut and the shrine, a sandy compound, the dancing arena, where most of the action during the exorcism is performed. The shrine has a congregation or a cult group that would always be present at the performance of exorcist rituals. In the presence of an audience, Somavati, the priest, Kapurala, and two male assistants and one drummer perform the exorcist ritual. In the temple adjacent, are the images of the gods and two goddesses. On the night of Somavati's exorcism, there was another patient, a young, attractive female typist, middle class and English educated, who worked in the Supreme Court in Colombo. Yet, although she underwent the same formal ritual as Somavati, her behavior was strikingly different. She was quiet, reserved, and displayed none of Somavati's acting out behavior. The ritual began at 8.25 p.m. The families of the patients move into the Dewale with offerings, baskets of fruit, sweets, flowers, and incense. The drummer beats his drum. Somavati shivers and hoots. In a few moments, they are all facing the images of Siva, Vishnu, Kali, Pattini, and Skanda. Kapurala shakes violently before the image of Siva with a basket of food in his hands. He sings songs in praise of the gods and his assistants join in unison. The slight tremors in Somavati have subsided. She is calm now, the drums are silent. When the Kapurala sings songs of Skanda, Somavati starts shaking slowly in a trance. The drums start again. The Kapurala starts shaking violently, and so does Somavati, imitating his movements. He moves into the dancing arena and blesses the audience. Somavati tries to move towards the seated audience. The Kapurala holds her by the hair, drags her to the center of the dancing arena.
She moves slowly towards him. He, cane in hand, is in a state of trance, possessed by Skanda, while she... Yes? Rather contemptuously. Here I come, and you can prove your worth, Mr. Kapurala. Yes? Get out, you. I am not dancing with you, they say. That cannot be, emphatically. Interrupting? I am not to dance. I order you who are inhabiting this mortal body to dance. No, not dancing. Even if one goes away, there are... Emphatically. Not only I, there are three others along with me. All three must dance right here. Emphatically, not only these three, but all the hosts of demons and demonesses living in Sakvala Rock must obey my beck and call. I am Lord Skanda of Kadirapura. Now, today, at this time, demons and demonesses have come to this island of the Dhamma, Sri Lanka. But remember, I am Skanda the Lord, and you must, yes, must, play. She sees someone in the audience and hoots several times and asks the person to go away. Then, in a thin, shrieking voice, she says, I am, I am Mary, Mary Nona. Nona. There, are, there two are two others, others as, well. as well. Leave this Leave place this immediately. Place immediately. The time is 8.55 p.m. He shakes. She jumps. Moving the lower part of the body. He dances, facing her cane in hand. She goes. He pulls her by her hair. He makes her dance. An assistant brings a torch. Somavati hits this man. She hoots. The Kapurala gives her a bunch of coconut flowers. Long, tough strands of flowers like a whip. She dances with the flower whip in her hand, hooting and says, I am, am Kaluyaka, Kaluyaka, the black demon. He whips his face with the coconut flowers. The whip breaks. As the Kapurala and Somavati dance with coconut flowers in their hands, they face each other and say, Most emphatically, ha-ha, beef-eating demons. I gave you the coconut flour to beat yourself with, emphatically. It can be done. Then beat yourself with it. Curtly. Not now. Looks towards the audience at the unknown outsider. Will you give me permission to hit him, or will you hit him? Shall I hit him? Most emphatically, you have been asked not to hit just anyone. This flour is for hitting demons and demonesses. Threateningly. Then will you tell him to leave? I am here to banish demons and demonesses. The demon that is here must be beaten with the flower. Before you batter me, you must batter that man. 
Will you ask him to leave or not? Leave, leave. However much you ask, I will not leave. Why? I must chase him away. Who is the demon activating this mortal body at this moment? Maha Sohana, great demon of the graveyard. For what reason have you been inhabiting this mortal body? With a short laugh, I did not deliberately inhabit it. Yes? Who transferred you then? That Luis Catadirala. He told this woman, you know who this woman is. This woman is Soma. Soma. Soma Wati. Soma Wati. What did he say? He requested that I break the neck and drink his blood. Mahasona, can you break someone's neck and drink his blood? Laughing in sarcastic tones? <coughs> well, of course not. But since he did something unfair, I wanted to do it. Yes, emphatically, tell me which Lord Buddha has given you permission. In lowered tones? The Lord Buddha did not give me permission to enter human bodies. Yes. Sarcastically? Yes, but if requested, I must come. Yes, I know that if someone transfers you, you must go there. This is a transfer, to be sure. This transfer has been done by exorcists some time back. But emphatically, in the light of dawn, with the ritual for the mother, Mata Badrakali, we will cut the evil sorcery. And then, will you leave this mortal body? Yes, I will leave. What proof can you give me? Proof? I will worship the Buddha, the gods. For certain? And I will worship the Kapumahatya and leave. Is this for certain? Not only me, there are three of us. Yes, the chief of the host must know how to take his followers and leave. Yes, otherwise, emphatically, the god of Alutnura, Daddy Munda, will burn you from head to foot. Yes, remember that. Now, do you want to play some more in this Dhamma Dweepa, this island of Dhamma, Sri Lanka? If so, this is the time.
Yes, I want a torch. Yes, you have been given a coconut flower. Do you want a torch as well? Yes, I need a torch. Pause. She sniffs the air. But I smell the impurity of a burnt meat substance. Yes. Turning to an audience. You will depart right now. What smell of impurity? Someone has brought a bottle containing pork fat. Who? Yes, I see him smiling. You have permission to pull him out. Sohona. Emphatically, and his retinue. Yes, these drum beats are for Mahasona. Speak up. Viriyaka, the blood demon. And the rest. Why are you laughing? Do you know who the other one is? Aha. Kaluyaka, black demon. three praters of the dead. Do you think I, you am, think I am a woman? Do you? Do you? Do you do think you? I am performing some gimmick? Do you? Do you know me do well? Do you think I am performing some gimmick? He is still gimmick? within the bounds of this property. Do Ask you know him me to well? leave. I will break his leg. Just prior to the entry of the god Dadimunda, the demons in Somavati are commanded to be quiet. They agree. They become active. Somavati starts hooting and dancing. A feature of the standard ritual has broken down. The god Dadimunda enters about 12.20 a.m. The personal pronoun he uses to address Somavati is Tho, one used towards extreme social inferiors.
Yes, do you know who I am? Then why do you not recognize the power of the Buddha doctrine and the Deva doctrine when God Skanda asked you to surrender a while ago? Do you know what is going to happen to you? I will be killed, I will be by, killed you. by you. I will not kill you, but burn you from head to foot. Laughs in sarcastic tone. Other exorcists have tried that before. If you do not go, we will put you in the fire and burn you. Sarcastically? Oh dear, I have already finished stamping out your fire. You have burnt us already, but you have not chased us yet. Yes, do you know who I am? I know you. Will these demons and demonesses leave this human body? I will, I leave. will leave. At what time will you leave? At dawn. At dawn. I want to play I want once to more. Play once I want to more. play once more I want in to the play morning. Once more in the morning. You. To as to inferior animal. Are you not going? In triumphant tones. <laughs> are you not leaving? Leaving you. Are you not going? I will hit you, I swear. Hit you, hit you, hit you. Mr. Caporale, what do you say? Remember that I shall not kill you. Remember that you will suffer various tortures in my hands. If you want to play, play as much as you like now. But afterwards, leave this human body with honor. Remember that it is necessary to have a stream of fire. It is necessary, remember. Why? Because the demons insulted the priest and cheated him. 
and they have possessed this body here, causing many pains and tortures. These demons and demonesses must be singed and burnt. You must remember to remember this. Will you not leave this human body and depart? I will leave. At what time? At three. For certain? I swear, swear by the gods, by the Buddha, I will depart. What sign will you make as you depart? I will hoot before the shrine, dance, spit, laugh, and leave, leave. David and Kapurala dance around the chair. The Kapurala grabs Somavati by the hair, forces her down in front of the chair. With the cane in his hand, he directs the woman to crawl under the chair. She crawls under the chair on all fours. Get up, get to the other side, says David. She crawls under the chair in the opposite direction. David places the stick on her back. Somavati sprawls flat on the arena floor. The Kapurala with his stick, David with a coconut flower, walk on the arena. No, no, no. Somavati, flat on the floor, crawls behind them. David holds her by the hands, drags her across the arena floor, face down into the shrine, from there to the inner sanctum, where we are not allowed to enter. There, the god Dadimunda, David, beats her back with his stick then returns with Somavati, now upright. It is now 1 a.m. Ah, okay, okay. No. No, no, no. Why do you tell me lies? Why do you tell me such lies? In an appealing manner. I did not speak lies, your lordship. Please consider whether I have really told you lies. Why, after I gave you permission and made you swear you would leave, why did you lie? In abject tones. I will look in the direction in which I will depart and swear I will leave. Swear, swear, swear by the gods, the Buddha, I will leave. You must yes. obey my command. Yes. Worship me and this human body. Yes. Redeem this human body. Yes.
At 4.30 a.m., the exorcism resumes when the Kapurala dresses up as the goddess Kali with a gown, brazier, anklets, and a red shawl in his hand. He shakes, he shivers, he chants gathas. Emphatically, I am ready to expel with my power the praetors who have inhabited this human body and the three demons, Mahasona, Ririyaka and Kaluyaka. But Mahasona, who is leader of them all, are you ready to leave this mortal body? Emphatically, will you come back to this body? Yes, will you ever again haunt or cast your malign eye on this body?
Never. Emphatically, are you ready to depart to your abodes? I am ready. Yes. What do you want? Nothing. I want to play. Drums beat and the two dance. Yes. I will leave, leave, leave. Then emphatically, I shall not torture you with punishments. I, Kali, with 18 other manifestations. There is plenty of time to play. Yes, I shall give you permission to play as much as you like. Then shake this mortal body and depart. Yes, the time is ripe. So emphatically, I say, hoot three times and leave this body. This is the final moment. Say, never again will these demons come and bow and touch her feet, swear. Bowing law, I swear, swear by the gods and the Buddha, that as long as life lasts and as long as the world lasts, I will not come again. I swear by the gods, the Buddha, and by my mother. Now say, I swear that as long as this body lasts, and as long as the wide earth lasts, I will never again seek this body. I swear, swear by the gods, by the Buddha, that as long as this body lasts and as long as the wide earth lasts, I will never again seek this body. Mahasona, the three of you must leave this body wherein you dance. Emphatically, the time has come. The time is 5 a.m. And so remember your promise. It is good that you leave, or else you die. The girl dances for a few seconds within the circle and falls down in a faint. this mortal body and go back to those who brought you here. Emphatically, never again will this girl be beset with such misfortune as long as her body lasts. Emphatically, after they leave this body you will see how it truly looks. Watch these things with pleasure and expectation.